This is the Ghana Hebero, and you are welcome to the Ghana Hebero. It's often referred to as the National Hebero, but it's a Hebero situated in the Department of Botany, University of Ghana, and does not receive any direct funding or whatever from central government. It depends on whatever allocation that is given to the Department of Botany. And so, in terms of financial resources, it's very limited. So we are doing our best under the situation of not receiving anything from national government by being called, but being called a national Hebero. Now, the Hebero actually started in 1948 when the University of Ghana was actually Establish as the Gold Coast um, University. Initially, specimens were collected at the Brie Botanical Gardens, which is not far away from here, and then moved to Achimota. Many of you might have heard Achimota or not. Uh, that was where our first president school, and it's one of the famous secondary schools or colleges here. So when the university was established, all the specimens were brought in here. Uh, the Heberum has, as at now, two permanent staff who, uh, you can see, they are always here. Tony is one of them and Mr. Ekbe, who unfortunately had to leave because we were a bit late. He had another assignment. Um, I do also provide some supervisory role here. Now, um, our specimens are arranged in a phylogenetic order and according to Hutchinson system of classification that many of you are aware of. And within a family, we have uh, species folders, not genus folders as you find in many Hebera, and these are arranged in alphabetical order. Now, our type specimens will always have just red coloration there to distinguish us from other specimens. So that's also a type specimen. And you could see that we have a stamp here, API project, Ghana Hebarium. <coughs> this is because there was the, this project called the African Plant Initiative, which aimed at digitizing and making information about all type specimens available online so that it could be accessible easily. You don't need to travel to London if you are studying African plants because the types are found there and so on and so forth. So this is a type specimen, that's a type specimen. Now, thus many of the specimen, almost 90% of the specimen here and in Ghana had been digitized. The first record of digitization dates back to 1999 and that was when I finished my first degree and what happened was that there was this project on medicinal plants actually conserving medicinal plants and promoting sustainable use and one way to do that is to know the distribution of the plants and see whether those habitats still exist or they are today concrete Okay, through urbanization and other land use changes. And one way to do this is to use herbarium specimen when we know their coordinates and so on, and we could map them and so on and so forth. So that's when digitization actually started, and I worked on it as a national service person. And I'm sure it's similar in many countries. When you finish your first degree, you serve your country and uh, you are given an allowance, not a salary, and it's compulsory, so I spent my time doing most of this. And we use the software called BGBase. I'm not sure if many of you have heard it, but BGBase, and that's what we use. It was written by Gary Walter in the Edinburgh University, so that's what we use. That same year, there was a project called Eposin. And Eposin was looking at lions. It was very vibrant in Ivory Coast. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so on. And so we were trained to use 
Brahms also, and Dennis Feiler, who wrote Brahms, was here to train us. Now, it's sad to say that after those projects, nothing happened again, because these <coughs> are projects. And as you see, each project comes with its own interest. Medicinal plant project sponsored by Darwin Initiative is interested in using or was keen in using BG base. The Ecosyn project was keen in using what? Brahms. And after those projects, nothing happened. And well, I continue with my program as a student. I wasn't a staff here, so well, I don't know what happened. But more or less, nothing happened. So in 2000, somewhere in 2009, um, I got a grant from JRS. And um, one of the team's objectives was actually to digitize, to capture data, museum data, natural history collection data. And so I had two computers here. And the strategy was, as I told you earlier, there are only two permanent staff here, working in here. Even there, they don't do purely curation. They go in to help with the undergraduate work. So you can even imagine their time, the amount of time they spend here. So I decided not to employ curators in here and not to contract any other person but to use the national service persons who are in the department. So what I did was to top up their salaries, their allowances. So if they were receiving 150 Ghana, I would top up with 150, so they were receiving 300 Ghana. And that was a lot of motivation, okay? And also I gave them a target. Yes, your colleagues aren't receiving anything. You are receiving a top-up. So you must work differently. So every day, 100 specimens, herbarium labels, digitized using branch. Of course, I, the start of the project involved training. So I brought Dennis down to Ghana again to do training in Brahms. And not only for my institution, but all the botanical institutions that have herbaria and that make use of largely like, like the forest research and so on. They were all invited and part of the training in Brahms. So I brought Francis here and so on and so forth. So each day, 100 specimens. So you could imagine two computers. Okay, 100, 100, so 200 a day, per day. Mm -hmm. At the end of the week, I go through and make some preliminary checks, okay? And store those data on my backups, just in case. Mm -hmm. So that was the strategy. And within two years, almost everything here has been digitized. What I need to do is actually to clean up the data further, make sure the georeferencing is correct, and get the precision right. I'm sure you'll be doing georeferencing very soon, so you hear most of these things that I'm talking of. Now, the other, should I say, innovation is that for some of the specimens, they were collected as at a time that GPS weren't that common. And so what we did was that there is this gazette of plant collection localities, okay? So where a plant is collected and we do not have the GPS, we go in through this and get some approximate coordinates so that we could do some amount of mapping with this. So that's how we were doing it. Of course, there were several challenges like not handwriting is not being very eligible to read and so on and so forth. Also, I must say, because everything was taking place here, we did not have to capture using a camera and then sit at your home to digitize. I make sure they come to work at 8, 8, 30, which is the expected time, and they close by within that time, they're able, if there were any challenges, they call me and we all sit down and see how we resolve it. 
and it worked. Now, I did not only concentrate on this herbarium, but I also provided, within that same grant project, I also provided funding to two other botanical institutions or herbaria. Uh, the second largest, so we got everything digitized there also, and also the Center for Scientific Research into Plant Medicine. So that's why I started by saying about 90% of the herbaria specimen have been digitized. There was a newly established herbarium in the north where Francis, I'm sure many of you know Francis by now, Francis is, and that's um, like a satellite herbarium to this place. So when it was established, it's likely concentrated on the savanna plants. As the specimens were collected, they were digitized immediately with branch. So I was able to get that data also. Now, uh, somebody will say, so why all this and the data? Well, the first thing we did was to share this data through JVF. Okay, so many of the data, uh, much of the data that you, uh, town has actually provided a link to you from JBIF will contain the data that we have provided. And actually, when you look on the JBIF website in Africa, apart from South Africa, Ghana is the second largest contributor of data. Okay. We don't intend that this data is for commercial purposes or so, but for research and, and so on and so forth. And of course, um, yes, it's also for human advancement. So, so far, that's how we have managed to get to the stage. Unfortunately, all my computers are not booting. I don't know why, but um, I am hoping that I could have some little time one day before you leave to demonstrate this on a laptop projected to you so that you see. We did not only really focus on using brands and so on and so forth. We also did imaging of the specimens, especially with the type specimens. And um, we used the HEP scan. I'm not, have any of you used the HEP scan? Yeah, you yeah, should. Yeah, okay. So it's basically an instrument for scanning. So you have your scanner. Okay, this is just the frame. And then you have a color chart. Okay. And of course, this is to serve as a scale. Okay, some institutions have their own rulers with their logos on. I think we didn't have the money to do that, the luxury to do that. Of course, it's, it's not easy to do some of these basic things in a developing country, even though it could be very easy in a, a developed country. But the primary purpose is actually to provide a scale which this ruler is providing. Okay, so most of the specimens we scan also, we had a barcode on them. Okay, so the barcode would be a unique identifier to that specimen. Okay, and we, our barcode starts with GC, so so and so and so, with a Ghana herbarium on it. One of the specimens they have a barcode on. And thus, actually it's going to be used to link the data because we usually store the specimen when we enter them into brands we also enter the barcode so we are trying to link the images to the herbarium label data so again i was trying to demonstrate this and connected my everything i don't know what happened just the, the point is that we stop digitization for some time and I don't know if that's why the computers are not booting but with us it's very easy those who have used it you turn it and you have a Photoshop or whatever and you scan but the resolution will have to be very high because good quality is demanded okay so 
I cannot readily tell you how many images we have, but we do have quite a lot of images also. And interestingly, I also have images of some type specimens from Q of Ghanaian specimen because when the API project started, I was in queue doing part of my PhD work, so I did all the scanning, imaging, and so on, and I still have those CDs also. So this is what we have been doing with respect to data capture from Heberon specimens. Also, um, I did provide some lots of funding to the animal biology people okay i'm not sure whether they told you about this and it was actually to also start some digitization i don't know what they have done since the project ended but I, at least i provided them with a computer and experimentally we started using not specify but brands to start exploring what we could do of course as far as we follow the standards Darwin core and so on, we should be able to transfer the data into specify or into any other software we want to manipulate and analyze the data. The next steps will be to look to clean this data properly, to do proper georeferencing, and to actually see the gaps in the data, which could be used to target collection because some Taxa could have been under collected, not geographically well covered within the country, and so on and so forth, which could provide the grounding for getting the flora of Ghana. We don't have a flora of Ghana as at now. Good. So, if you have any questions for me, you. You mentioned your last sentence that you don't have a flora for Ghana. Yeah. I feel uh, the is it William Horton did a lot of work here. Yeah. So he his work just end up into publications or not right no flora? Yes, he, he we have for example trees of Ghana or a field guide to trees of Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a book on herbs of Ghana, we have Woody Plants of Ghana by uh, Ivan, that's nineteen sixty one. Okay, but we don't have anything that you can say this is authoritative flora of Ghana. That's what I mean. Okay, the flora of West Tropical Africa, which also includes Cameroon, okay, it's very outdated. Uh, outdated. Yes, 1957. Yeah, so can somebody readily say that? These are a number of plants in Ghana based on specimens and so on and so forth. That, that's the problem. Are the images shared internationally after the API project? Yes, yes. On yes. what platform? Well, so as part of the API, they provided us with us and all the images we we captured, we had to send it to the mm -hmm. API project and then they uploaded it. Okay, so it's out of a centralized server? Yeah. And you have access to the images of specimens in Q and, and other institutions that were participating? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. How do you take care of the herbarium? The herbarium, mm -hmm. like I said, there are only two curators here. Okay, who are taking care of this place? Um, in terms of, I don't know, your question is open ended, so I will try and provide as much as possible. Mm -hmm. You take this. Yep. You have some. Mm -hmm. oh, as for this, is good. Mm -hmm. But you have some with the, mm -hmm. let's say, insect. The insect. insect. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, it, so pest management. We have uh, pheromone traps. Uh, Tony, do you have one close by? That's it's actually used to monitor. So you see, these are the box of cigarette beetles, indicating that there are insects. 
within the herbarium and so we should initiate actions about it so that's one way we monitor insects being here the temperatures are also supposed to be very cold mm -hmm. so that i think it's the opposite elsewhere <laughs> so th that's how we monitor you are not supposed to smoke in the herbarium. You are not supposed to bring food into the mm -hmm. herbarium and so on. So they make sure all those basic things. And also, we have those freezers for defreezing the specimens before we incorporate them into the main herbarium. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the ways that we take care of this place. Okay. But, but this can, mm -hmm. can actual the, the insect in the herbarium. Yes. I don't this this, uh, this uh, mm -hmm. material mm -hmm. can attract the <coughs> the insect in the, the can community. it attract or yeah yeah, yeah. Tuer, yeah. Oui. non non mm. attirer attirer les insectes parce que ce n'est pas aussi bien quand on met ça dans les dans les rivières quand quelque chose attire les insectes c'est pour le nettoyage en fait, c'est ce que moi j'ai compris, il dit que ça sert à nettoyer, c'est pour piéger quoi. C'est pour piéger les insectes. Oui, oui, oui c'est pour piéger, mais mm. ça, ça attire quand même les insectes. Parce qu'il y a les phéromones ici, les euh, phéromones qu'on appelle les phéromones qui attirent. Mais c'est ça l'objectif en fait. Oui, oui, même si ça attire, ça, attire ça, ça peut attirer plusieurs insectes ici. Et puis eux ils enlèvent ou bien hein? Non, non, non. En fait, tu vois les insectes de dehors quoi. Oui, ça peut amener les insectes de, de, de dehors ici. Donc, avant, avant que ça, ça, ça soit, ça soit tué, soit sur les, 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 les insectes de l'herbier. Oui, mais ça, 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 ça peut ah, déjà, déjà prendre les insectes animer les. Oh, oui. Je ne sais pas s'il y a quelqu'un qui veut translate. Il translate ça en anglais. C'est compliqué. Il veut, tu peux translate. Tu peux essayer de expliquer. Il dit que les insectes sont that the pheromone can attract more insects yeah. than expected before the, the before they could die yeah. uh, he said that as you said is it just for just to, to clean up the here the herbarium he said if this could be just like uh, just the opposite of cleaning because it will it will attract, attract more insects yeah. Yes, so what it does is it's, it's an indication of the fact that you have insects within, so you should put in the appropriate measures. Mm. Mm. Okay, so when you have this, okay, it's telling us that there are insects, mm. okay, pests within the herbarium. Now, it could, depending on the levels, it could indicate to us that we have to defreeze certain cables mm. or all of them. Formerly, we used to do fumigation, so you could see those things there, but because of the health implications, okay? But it's because you might not see the pests, but with us, at least you have an idea that there are pests within the cupboards. Mm -hmm. 